Hello there, guys, gals, non-binary pals. Hi, y'all. Uh, God damn it. Okay, hold on. Give it a second. There we go. Hope y'all are having a lovely, chill, relaxing Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday morning, afternoon, evening, nighttime. No matter what time of day it is. I hope y'all are having a nice, chill one at that. Me, myself. Besides, you know, messing up the in the intro a little bit there, pretty good day altogether. A little bit rough here and there, just because, uh, once again, the pollen is kind of working against me. I, I, I'm pretty certain the at the moment it is grass pollen. I think that's what I get the most, is the grass pollen, which is a bit of a pain because I live around a lot of countryside, and, you know, countryside means a lot of grass and a lot of trees, which is also another sort of pollen that... I tend to just kind of suffer with so you know just kind of been dealing with that it's it's never fun dealing with hay fever I I can't wait for the the winter seasons again where I no need no longer need to worry about getting killed well not killed but you know getting attacked by grass and trees it's not exactly the best sort of feeling so it's just a bit of a little bit of a stuffy day bit stuffy a little bit coffee like had a little bit of a tickle in the throat a bit i think it's mainly hay fever but well i'm, I'm hoping it's kind of mainly hay fever and nothing else i that's kind of the hope of the moment but to try and counter it i've got my usual nice little cup of tea here with a little bit of honey just to kind of soothe the throat just a tad a little bit but other than that it's been a pretty chill wednesday for me today and i hope that it's been a lovely chill wednesday for all of you as well so today we're doing some supermarket simulator this might be the last bit of supermarket simulator we do for a little bit just because there is a few other games i want to try as i said in the previous stream i actually do want to try and set myself a set schedule for games because i have a very bad habit when it comes to games that i'll play the game and then i'll just keep playing it until i feel like some level of completion with it which isn't the best for variety. I, I think it's just because I've been so used to streaming one game and only one game for like, I think it's five years, roughly about five years now. So going into variety, I got to like get into that bit of variety mindset where we don't just stick to one game. We try like a bunch of different games kind of bounce around a little bit because we also got Stardew, got Supermarket Simulator. There's a whole bunch of indie games that I want to try as well. So I'm going to try and set myself a proper schedule and, you know, try my best to try and keep to it. It's the handy part of having that little whiteboard back there is that on the other side of it, I've got like a big to-do list of stuff that I need to do in my personal life and also a nice little schedule there as well. So I'm going to be able to like, you know, every time I walk past that, I'm reminded and it keeps me, you know, making sure I do this stuff. So most likely next stream we'll be doing something a little bit different. But I think we can get, honestly, a lot of stuff done in Supermarket Simulator today. We got a lot of stuff done yesterday, too. Like, now that we've actually properly finished off the, uh, the Labyrinth, it's going to be a lot easier from here. Like, the Labyrinth was honestly the biggest part of it. Like, getting that done is pretty good. Like, we have an actual functional Labyrinth now. It's not just, like, a bunch of different freezers, a bunch of different, like, fridges here and there that just kind of mixed together not really doing anything we actually have a proper labyrinth where it's all one path spiraling towards the center i'm surprised that we were able to get it to work to be honest it, it took a lot of work yesterday to get it like actually functional but i am very happy that we've got it actually functional but it also means that we cannot move anything else like i don't want to move anything because i don't want to mess that up again because that was like a good solid hour yesterday troubleshooting all that and it's not exactly the easiest of things to troubleshoot either. So, yeah, probably won't be expanding it anytime soon. But we can get more licenses and we can just kind of do some regular sort of progression with the supermarket simulator. The aim today is to try and get most of the shelves and most of the fridges full. That's kind of like the overall goal. Then I'll be pretty satisfied with the labyrinth. So, without further ado, let us get into the game. And... There we go. Give it a second to load, because it always takes just a second to load. Perfect. All right, so we need to do our usual morning routine of just making sure everything's in stock. I don't know why this is out. I don't know why that's out either. Hold on. Let me just stock these back here. 
Here we go, a little bit of butter. Where's the butter? Was the butter over? I forget where everything was organized now. I could have sworn the butter was over here, wasn't it? Tuna. Wait, where did I store the butter? Did, did it remove the butter? The, the restocking dude. Oh no, wait, no, that isn't. There we go, butter, perfect. All right, let's get everything moved around. So, usual routine. Let us have a look-see. So, we got... Okay, so that's okay. We don't need any more of that. These are just the overflow. This is where we need to start looking. So, we need coffee, eggs. Coffee, egg, cheese, pasta. Coffee, egg, cheese, pasta. Let's have a look-see. Two coffee. And two eggs. And two pasta. The usual routinely morning checkup with let's see two cereal and two oil two cereal boom and two oil boom luckily we're at a point now where we can just purchase this and then leave it for everyone else to reorganize it it's honestly pretty handy then we go two flour two bread two milk let's have a look probably get both the flour because i'm pretty sure both are running just a tad little bit low at the moment two of that Two of that. Then... What, other, what else was it? It was the bread, right? Yeah, bread and the milk. That's what the other ones we need. Two bread with two milk. There we go. And lastly, two bread, two milk. Let's get two rice as well with that. Two rice. Doo -doo -doo. Still wish that I could order more than just, you know, ten items at a time. Just so I can just go through without having to double back every time. So it's all spaghetti. Need two whole spaghettis. We need... Let's get two salt, two peanut butter. Do, do, do. Two salt. So honestly, I think probably by the end of this day, we probably can get another license. I really want to get that alcohol license. It's just a little bit pricey. But in terms of profits, I think we're doing pretty decent right now. Especially now that we don't have to worry about the... Let me get the cheese. We don't need to worry about expanding the labyrinth anymore. Everything else can just go straight towards the product. We can now actually, you know, properly start playing the game. Rather than go for a random thing that I just thought I wanted to go towards. Don't regret it though. I like our labyrinth. It took a lot of hard work getting that labyrinth to the point that it's at. We, we spent a lot of time on that. Let's see. Two syrup. Oh, we need two sugar. Two sugar. I'm gonna get two of both. We're always running out of the other sugar too. Then two fries. Fries. Boom. Okay, we are slowly working through all our money right now. May not have enough for the stuff on the other side. Then we need two potatoes. Gonna order our usual amount of chicken, because chicken is still extremely popular. Two potatoes. Yeah. Four chicken should do. I don't know what it is about the chicken. I don't know why that keeps selling out so quickly. People just really love their chicken. Then we need... Oh, God, we need so much here. Okay, let's focus the sushi first. Sushi shouldn't be too bad. Too large sushi. And I think that's all I can afford right now. Okay, what we get? We get one small, one large. Okay, that should be good for now. I'm going to leave our dues to keep restocking and we'll just open up the store for now. We've got enough on the shelves to keep the customers appetized. Appetized? Satisfied. That's the word I was going for. The shelves should be looking pretty good right now. It's all about just making sure this stock room's all kept up to date. Because if the stock room's kept up to date, then the floor is also kept up to date. So it is worth it. Honestly, this game has definitely become more of a stock room simulator over time, more so than a supermarket simulator. I think once you start getting employees, it really does start become keeping this place stocked more so than anything else. It's why I'm happy that we had the goal of getting the labyrinth built, because that at least allowed us to still focus on parts of the supermarket. I probably should be paying attention to what the people in the store are complaining about too, but most of the time it's about our oil, and as has been stated many times before, we will not be budging on the oil. This store was founded on expensive oil. And people still buy it too. I still need to restock the oil pretty frequently. So it must be selling. And it's not my fault if it's selling and it's expensive. You should blame the people buying it, not me. 
Four eggs too expensive. Don't care. There we go. Move the honey. I do want to go in and just double check to make sure the labyrinth is functional. I know it was functional at the end of stream yesterday, but you never know what might change over time. What's the oil price now? It's still $7. We've stuck to that price. Still remains to be $7. Oh, oh come on. Don't do this to me. Really? Is it broken again already? Ew, I fixed it yesterday. Why is it broken already? Okay, what's breaking it? There's got to be something specific that's breaking it right now. Let me... Hold on. Let me carry this real quick. Is it this? Is this breaking it? No, that's not causing any issues. God damn it. Why does my labyrinth keep breaking? Why does the game keep working against me? You know, we're making decent profit on the oil when it does sell at the very least. Uh, maybe it's this? Let's, let me try removing this. Let's see if that works. Will people come through now? No, still not coming through. If I remember correctly, last time it was causing issues, it was this one specifically. I wonder if that's still the case or not. No, still. God damn it. I thought I had this fixed. I was really happy because I thought I had it fixed. Well, let me try and put this down like this. Boom. See if that maybe still works. Hmm. We'll give it a test till the end of the day, see if maybe it changes. It could just be a first day issue. I really hope that this labyrinth does work. They are walking over this way. I just got to see at what point are they getting stuck. Because they're not making it to the checkout, which is the downside. They're supposed to be able to get down to the checkout. They can still walk across here. I'm pretty sure before it was actually one of the fridges here that was causing issues. Hmm. Let's see. Hey, Rain. Hey, Zach. Hope we both have a lovely Wednesday so far. Uh, okay, let me try, like, moving this. See if this helps. Okay, so now they're walking through there. But are they making it to the checkout, which is the main thing? They're funneling through there. Hmm. Now, they're still not making it to the checkout. If they can't make it to the checkout, that means it's not working. At least not working how it's supposed to be working. What if I move it like that? Let's see if that changes anything. It's got to be one specific thing that's ruining this. I really thought that we had it fixed yesterday. I don't know why it's just suddenly started to break again. It's almost like they don't want me to be able to turn my store into a labyrinth. I don't know why they'd want that. Our labyrinth is perfect. Nothing's wrong about our labyrinth. Uh, let's see. What else? Oh. Hmm. Maybe it's that fridge there. Oh, let me try moving this one. Because I noticed that they kind of start teleporting around this part. So let me see if I can move this just a tad bit more forward. I don't know if I can, though, with the space that's available. Move that like. Boom. Let's see, does that change anything? Hey, Violinus. Uh, no, they just still teleport through there. Hmm. It's probably something to do with the checkouts again. That was cause what was causing the issue yesterday. Hmm. I'm trying to think, what could we do here? Oh, so where's our stocking dudes? Are they still working? Yeah, they're still working. They're just moving everything around. What's going on at the front? Yeah, they get stuck there. Hmm. What could it be? It's probably just one thing that I need to move. Now, initially I thought it was going to just be one of the freezers, but it might be one of the fridges again. Boom. Hmm. I can't move these fridges anymore back, can I? No. Okay, what if I move this just like a little bit more forward? Will that fix it? Like so. It's probably something to do with this passageway here. Okay, let me try and move this like... Because that's what it was last time. Move that there. The labyrinth has come a long way. You know, considering how small our shop is, we can fit a lot in here. It's, got, it's probably something to do with the checkouts, isn't it? That's what it was last time. What if I were to move this one, though? Let me try moving this freezer. Does that change anything? Okay, changes a little bit. So what if I move this, like... Okay, so now they're making it to the checkouts. But what if I put it back down? 
Do they still start going to the checkouts or do they just remain there? Hmm. I don't think what other ways we can do to solve this. So that freezer actually might be the issue then. They yeah, see they walk there and then boom, they teleport. Also, for some reason, they're walking into my stock room, which they shouldn't be doing. That's not allowed. Uh, hmm. Let me try moving this again. You see, as soon as that's moved, they start flooding in. So what we could do is... Hmm. I don't want to compromise with changing the entrance again. What if I were to flip this? What if I instead had this like so? It's not perfect, but does it work? The main thing is making sure that it works. Oh, that might have solved it. They're going around the labyrinth again. They do teleport, unfortunately. But did that solve it, maybe? At least in some regard? Let's keep watching, see if it has anything solved. No, the items are still flying from the shelves, which means they're collecting it from a distance, which means the labyrinth isn't working. Hmm. Yeah, I'm assuming what's happening with the AI is that it assumes there's no way out, so it teleports. Okay, so this isn't the issue then. I don't think. It's all about finding the one problem. Because it's probably just one bit of furniture that's just a little bit misaligned. That's probably what it is. Also, they are flooding my stock room right now. Uh, what if I remove this? Like so. What if I put this like this instead? Does that change anything? I doubt it'll change anything, but it's worth giving it a shot. The one piece, exactly. The singular one piece. Hmm. Well, so how are we doing license-wise? How much is the alcohol license? If I remember correctly, it's in the 3,000 range. License. Ooh, yeah, 3,500. I mean, we could probably get there. Worst come to worst, we could just take out another loan. There's no harm in taking out a loan. Well, I mean, there probably is if we don't pay it back. But I'm a, I think we can pay it back pretty easy. Uh, maybe if I try moving this. What if we move... Hmm. Hold on, what if I were to move this? Move this like so. See, look, they're flooding in there again now. But then if I place this like move it like that what if i have it like that does that change anything no that makes it worse actually okay but what if i were to have it like this instead does that solve anything i can walk around there is it that it could be this corner again that i think they might just be getting stuck there Hmm. You see that he walks around there, walks there, gets stuck. What if I remove this? What if I were to move this like so? What if I just have it like this way instead? That still leaves some room to move around. Can they squeeze through here though is the question. Hmm. Let's see. Okay, so she teleports again. How are these customers doing? Walking around here, okay. And then you get stuck there. Hmm. I do think it might be this freezer again, because we did have issues with this before. Let me try and move that like that again. Maybe it's just too close over here? I don't think this freezer is causing any issues, because I'm seeing them walk past this pretty easily. Let me think from my thinking mug. Hmm. The restocking guys can kind of make it pass, but not very too well. Also, it seems that we're out of salmon now, so I have to order some of that tomorrow. Walks around there, then... Then he just teleports. That's when he just disappears into thin air. Okay, let me... I got an idea. Let me pack this up. What if I were to move this one closer like this? Boom. And then move this. Why are they moonwalking? 
Where the hell are they going? Okay. Then let me move this one here instead. Does that work? It's a compromise, but if it works, it works. Hmm. Otherwise, we might need to rethink about moving the entrance of the spiral again, which wouldn't be ideal. Nah, they're still having issues. And then... Boop, teleport. Hmm. I do wonder what's causing the issue. Because they can definitely walk past here. We've seen them walk past here. The only area we haven't seen them walk past is over here. So I'm starting to think that is the issue. It, it, that's got to be the issue if they're not walking past there. Move this back as far as we can. Let me try and move this corner. Now, how far can I move this back? Hmm. Not by much, no. What if I just put that, like, dead in the center? It's not aesthetically pleasing, but if it works, it works. Okay, end of the day. Let's see. End of the day with a pretty decent profit. Spaghetti, pizza, apple juice, cake. Cake. That's good. This cake okay? Yep, that cake's okay. Let's squeeze through here. Spaghetti. Nope, that's all good. Apple juice. Uh, change that to three. And let's see the pizza. Pizza. Change that to five. There we go. All good. Okay, so I'm hoping maybe that's going to fix it, potentially. Hmm. Okay, let's do the usual restock. I need to order some salmon, so that's going to be our main priority. I'm going to stock this stuff up first, because that's stuff that we're running pretty low on. And it's the most expensive stuff, too. Then after today, I think, is when we... Boom, 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 boom. Then two of the salmon. Boom. Oh, dear God. Okay, there's a lot of our money gone. That's fine. We need more coffee once again. So I'm thinking tomorrow we buy the new license. We, if we need to get our loan, we get our loan. But tomorrow we buy the new license. Then we need more milk. Two milk. Two flour. Two milk, two flour. Pasta cheese tuna again. Oh my god. Pasta. Cheese. People love their cheese. And... Tuna. I mean, I can't disagree with them that I do love my cheese too. I had a really nice quesadilla for lunch today. It's a quesadilla with a bit of chorizo chopped in. It's really nice. And yeah, there's the tuna, more of that cereal. Do -do -do, boom. And more flour. Oh my god, more flour and more spaghetti. Flour. More flour and more of the spaghetti. Boom. Okay, I, we can't really order too much more. What are we, like, in desperate need of right now? Uh, potatoes and cola. Potato. And soda. And soda. Boom. Okay, we've gone through literally all of our money, but that's fine. What is, what is this dude doing? What are these dudes doing? the hell? Okay, that's fine. I don't know why they were just staring at the shelf there. Remove that sugar for now. Let's see, how are they doing in terms of restocking? They seem to be doing alright. Who doesn't love cheese? I mean, cheese, again, is just one of those things that's extremely versatile. I think that is the main benefit to it, is versatility. Same with potatoes, same with, like, onion, garlic. We love versatility kings. There we go. Open up the store for the day. We may as well help out here just a tad little bit. Tuna. With... More... Tuna. I keep forgetting that I've got two places for tuna right now. That's why I keep overstocking it. More pasta. More soda. Boom. They were just taking their union mandated break. That's what they were doing there. As a good boss, though, I had to stop them. There is no union mandated breaks in this place. There is no union. 
the union gets sent to the labyrinth. Uh, there we go. Do -do -do. Move this one here. Move that there. The only union in this place is between me and the Minotaur. Put that there. There we go. Slap this one over here. Good old restocking. And I think I could probably leave the rest of it to them. I need to go observe the labyrinth. We're in labyrinth engineering mode right now. Where we need to find out if it's working or not. Oh, they're walking around. Oh, we fixed it. Yes. Perfect. So it's this fridge again. It, last time it was this fridge too. I wonder why it did that. But let's see. Does it? Do they make it to the checkout though? That's a big part of it. Do they make the journey to the checkout or not? Where do those two people just go? Oh, there they are. You're your own government. Exactly. No need for a union here. The labyrinth is completely fine. Perfect. Okay, labyrinth is back and functional again. Perfect. It must be every time I reset the game, for some reason it needs to be resorted. But there we go. Our life's work at work here. This is what it was all for. Wasting time? <laughs> Wasting their time, wasting my time, and wasting my employees' time. Because the restocking dudes need to go through the labyrinth as well. Nothing like wasting a bit of time. Also, we need to restock the chicken again. God damn it. People in this town really love their chicken. You know what? I'm going to increase the price of chicken. Since we seem to go through so much of it. The price of chicken is going to go to $12. Let's see if people still buy it in loads again. And then next, we get ourselves a nice bit of alcohol. So the license for the alcohol is, let's see, 3,500. How much in debt can I put myself? I need a $5,000 loan for that over, we'll do it over 25 days. With any luck, I'll be lost in the labyrinth within day 25 and therefore not having to pay back the loan. That's 325, oh, that's a return payment of, th oh God. That's 3,000 extra dollars that we're paying back to them. Okay. Hmm. I forgot that there's interest with this sort of thing. Okay. Okay, what about like over 12 days? That's only $1,500 extra. We're not going to take it out just yet. I want to see how much money we have at the end of the day. Then we can decide if we do it or not. Because we could probably risk at least one day without restocking everything else. Then obviously the next day we would really need to restock. I just want the beer. I want the Minotaur to be able to get drunk. If they so please so. If they so do want to do so. So, so, so. Also, we're going to be stocking the beer all the way over here, by the way. We need to make it as much of a journey as possible. The goal here is to waste the customer's time. We're treating the customers hostile from the get-go. As most retail workers should, because most of the time they are right. This is a hostile shopping environment. Good working environment. Hostile shopping environment. We have to see if anyone gets stuck in here too. I think the way that we put it formed, there shouldn't be any issues of people getting stuck, which is a shame, but if that's the cost of making the labyrinth work, that's the cost of making the labyrinth work. This whole thing is meant to work this way. Wasting their time might be lowering your profits. No, because if you think about it, they spend more time in the shop. Therefore, they have a higher chance at seeing something they might want. It's basic economics. It's like a casino. The goal is to keep them in here and get them lost. So they buy more. It's just like Tesco's does in the UK. I'm just copying from them. It's bimsness is what it is. Okay, all looking good. All looking good. Perfect, perfect. We've got so much shelf space to use. Jesus. That's fine. We'll make sure it gets used. And boom. I was going to make sure no one's walking through here, right? No one's coming into pri into my private domicile. No, I think we're all good. That would be a shortcut, which isn't in the labyrinth's code. There is no shortcuts in the labyrinth. 
Okay. Oh, good. Yep, they're still walking there. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so if we do have any more issues again, we've got to remember it's this corner. This corner seems to be the main issue causer. Checkouts are full. Don't care. Walk through the labyrinth some more, and, and by the time you get to the end, you should have some checkouts free. Okay, we're doing good profit-wise so far today. It would be a smart idea to get another cashier. However, that would mean rearranging everything, and I don't want to do that again. <laughs> I don't want to spend the rest of stream trying to make this labyrinth work again. It's working now and I'm happy. These cashiers are just going to be overworked and underpaid. They will not be getting a raise. I will, but they won't. I need to go on my sixth golf trip of the month. And you may be saying, but wait, the month only just started. Exactly. That's how true CEOs do it. At least eight golf trips per week. That's the CEO way. Taking at least a good chunk of the customer profits from it, too. It's fine, though. Every Friday, we put pizza in the office. Most of it's eaten by the Minotaur before anyone gets into work. But, you know, it's the thought that counts. At least I'm still doing it. The pizza is still in there. If they want to fight the Minotaur for it, they can. But that's not my problem. I really hope they don't start a union. <laughs> there we go. Okay, all good. I think we actually can get some more pizza soon, can't we? That's one of the licenses we can get. Licenses. Uh, mashed potatoes. Yeah, we can get some more pizza soon if we wanted to. That's $2,800. Alcohol takes priority, though. We're going to get the alcohol next, because that should be some decent profit for us, too. Then the money's going to be flooding in. No, Want to know what the Minotaur's favorite pizza toppings would be? Well, the Minotaur's vegan. We hired specifically a vegan Minotaur. So probably some like feta cheese, bit of onion. Honestly, I do actually kind of like a good feta cheese pizza. It's surprisingly good. Like a bit of caramelized onion on it too. Oh, tastes really nice. There we go. Oh, good. Couldn't find potato bag. Are we seriously out of potatoes again? Oh, God damn, we are out of potato. There, we'll stock it in the morning. It's fine. We can't even order any more right now anyway. Oh, my God. There's so many more customers we need to do. So, wait, what is the Minotaur doing with all the sacrifices? Oh, the Minotaur hunts them for sport. It's purely for sport, that's it. As soon as the store closes, it's announced over the intercom that they're going to be hunted for sport. It's all fun and games, you know. For the Minotaur, it's just a job at the end of the day. You know, they're working a 9 to 5 just the same as everyone else. Though in this case, it's 9pm to 5am. Yeah, exactly, in Richmond. Being hunted for sport... As should every customer that comes in just as you're about to close the shop. They should too be hunted for sport. I hated every customer that would come in just as we're about to close. I mean, like, I'd understand it a lot of the time, but I would still hate them. I'd still be, like, stink-eyeing them every time. Let's see. Fruity Pebbles? I don't think we've got Fruity Pebbles, but I imagine we've got probably our own equivalent of it. I can't remember seeing anything called Fruity Pebbles before. But, you know, as with everything, we've probably got our own version. I imagine there's probably something with Haribo. It's either Haribo or Mawam, which I'm pretty sure is the same thing. Oh my god. Okay, maybe we do need another checkout because this is taking forever. <laughs> the store closed like five hours ago and we're, we're barely even through all the customers. In fact, there's still people shopping. I wonder if this is because we made a labyrinth. Maybe that's why it's taking so long. <laughs> the fact the store closed five hours ago and there's still people here shopping. Yeah, you know, actually, that's probably my own fault. I don't know why I'm complaining. This was the whole point of the labyrinth. I'm assuming if I finish the day, like, the customers will just disappear, right? Like, I don't get the profits from them. I'm assuming that's how that works. Though part of me is kind of tempted to try it, I won't lie. Let's see. Oh, wait, is it a cereal? Oh, 
it's the one with like the um the bird on the front right i think that's an american thing not a uk thing because i i don't remember seeing any of it in the uk i think do you think you'll need a loan if you just don't stock it depends how low we are on stock though like we are running a bit low on a few things it's flintstones okay so yeah i, I probably don't we probably don't have it here in the uk then those are fruit loops ah got the wrong fruit sorry sorry i forgot the difference between loops and pebbles why is everything so fruity i just like some good honey nut cheerios you can't go wrong with them there we go all good and boom there we go last customer of the day and boom Day 69, nice. Decent day of profit. Olive oil and egg. Oil, well, we're not changing the oil. I shall, let me see. Nope, not changing the oil. Egg, however. How egg? Eh. 4.25. Boom, there we go. 4.25. Okay, so I think it's worth taking out a loan. Probably not like the $5,000 one. Though, obviously, that does depend. I think $2,000 should do us good. Let's do $2,000 paid over 14 days. That's just an extra $560, which isn't the bad, isn't the worst. Take loan. I'm going into debt. Then what we do is management. Andrew Cinnamon Toast Crunch. I've always wanted to try that. I don't think we've got that in the UK. And... Yep, that's alcohol. Yep, alcohol. Purchase. So let's see. How much is the alcohol? Oh, it's expensive. <laughs> okay, let's try and order just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's try and order one of everything just so I can put it on the shelves. Boop. Vomka. Boom. With beer. Boom. With doo -doo -doo. that's the veal. I don't know why that's in this order. Uh, veal, veal, veal. We have a lot of veal in right now. More beer. Boom. I hope they let me finish this off rather than doing it themselves. Put that up there. More veal. More beer. Boom. There's actually a lot of beer. I wonder how much of this is stored in the fridge. This is chips, not beer. Let's put that there. This is more steak. I think we're missing something. I think Are we missing more beer or is that everything? Oh, let me just check to make sure they didn't stock it somewhere else. Milk, apple juice. No, I think we're good. Okay, now let's work on getting this stocked. So is vodka in the fridge? It's not. It's on the shelf. Okay, so we'll put that over here. This will be the drinking shelf. Boom, 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 boom. There we go. Chuck that for now. Vodka's going to be priced at... Let's do 12.50. 12.5. How much profit are we making from that? Eh, $4 profit. Not the worst, not the best. Then we've also got... Now this looks like shelf to me. Yep, that is shelf. Oh my god, that is huge. Boom. That is... Oh my god, that's so expensive too. Okay, so we'll price that at like $27. $5 profit, not too bad. Oh, this is the fridge one, I'm pretty sure. I think it's the singular ones that go in the fridge. Yeah, there we go. With some of that there. Boom. We'll price that at 4.5. $2 profit. So it's the smaller ones that go in the fridge then. Then boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Chuck that. That's going to be 3.25. Decent profit. Lastly, in terms of the beer, we have this. Which I'm assuming is... Yeah, that's going to be there again. There we go. Let me take some of that. Put that there. Boom. How much is that going to be? That'll be 
Nice, nice, nice. Okay, I think we're starting to get the more higher price stuff, which is good. It just means it costs a lot of money in terms of, like, regular restocking. So we've also got the chips and the hummus. Chips. Where should we put the chips? Where would make the most sense to put the chips? Uh, hmm. Uh, do chips go with honey? Or do we start somewhere new with it? Oh, potatoes. We'll put it next to the potatoes. That makes sense. Potatoes next to potatoes. And boom. What are these called? Covidos. Okay. Interesting name. Put those for six dollars. And hummus. Hummus will put this next to the honey. Oh, it's a fridge thing. Ooh. Hummus. Uh, where'd make the most sense for hummus? Hmm. Put it with the meat, maybe? Does it make it doesn't really make much sense to put it with the meat? Maybe we just start a new fridge with it? Yeah, maybe we just start a new fridge with it. Let's just go boom, boom, boom. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Whoop. There we go. We'll put that at 450. Are you going to TwitchCon USA this year? No, I'm not. I'd love to go to TwitchCon at some point. It's just, it's a lot of work to get to TwitchCon. It's, it's one of those things that just seems so daunting trying to make the travel over there. I hope one day maybe there'll be a TwitchCon in the UK. The traveling to different countries, I don't have much experience with that. Okay, let's do the regular restock for now. Two chocolate, two candy, two cake. Not to mention the expenses of it. Flying and getting hotels at TwitchCon ain't cheap. Then two of the cake. I think that's probably what I'd be the most concerned of is actually getting a place to stay. Two cake, two cheese, two sugar. Sugar, boom. Two cheese, boom. Get those ordered. Yeah, I find travel. I never really traveled much when I was a kid. Like, we never really went on holiday or anything like that. So I don't really have much experience when it comes to that sort of thing. I've only actually flown once in my life, I think. And that's when I went to Sweden. That's like the one time I've flown. Luckily, I was going with a friend as well, which definitely made it a lot easier. Two bread, two water, two milk. Water. I went to France one year, but that was with the train. Like the Euro Tunnel, I think it's called. That's the year that I went to Minecon. And to this day, I still get emails asking if I want to sell my Minecon cape. Even John Lennon has asked. Or someone with the email John Lennon. Two of that. Is it the real John Lennon? I can't say for sure. Two oil, two rice, two spaghetti. Two oil. Two rice. Two spaghetti. Boom. You know, I might go one year. See, for me, the appeal of TwitchCon isn't TwitchCon itself. It's seeing friends. That's the main reason I'd want to go. But I probably wouldn't even want to buy a ticket for the convention itself. In all honest opinions, I don't really enjoy conventions. I find like every convention is pretty much the same. And I've got no real interest in panels. Because I think that's the main thing is the panels. And I don't really care for that. If it's something I'm interested in, I'll just watch it later, you know? I'd rather like just go see friends and hang out with them more so than going to the convention itself. See, okay, so we've just got to wait until we get to, what is that? That is 327. Yeah, so if, if I was to go, that'd be the main reason. Maybe some, yeah. See, all good. Yeah, we've got a lot of stuff that needs to be restocked. Luckily, all of this over here seems pretty well stocked right now. Minus the goddamn chicken again. It's always the chicken. Why do people love the chicken so? Do we at least have some chicken in stock over here? I wrote limo service for the girls. Well, I don't know. If, I don't know how to drive. So that probably wouldn't end too well. Supermarket's expensive. It's pretty pricey. You ever been to Comic Con? I've been to a UK Comic Con before. I've gone to like you know Eurogamer. Oh, what was it called? Um, 
Ah, oh, th th there used to be this another convention I went to that was gaming related. Insomnia. I went to Insomnia. I I've gone to a lot of like UK conventions, but never like abroad or anything like that. All good, all good. I actually helped out with a stool at one of the Insomnias. That Minecraft server that I was friends with the admins for is called Hive. I helped them out with their little stool there. I think even to this day, I still have VIP on that server. Let's see. But I've just been to a lot of them and... I don't know, just the appeal of conventions isn't there for me anymore. I think that probably the thing that I always love most at those conventions is Artist Alley. Just seeing all the different artists and all the different styles. I think that's genuinely my favorite part of it. Everything else I don't really care too much about. I always ignore the Funko Pop stool. There's always one at every convention. I don't want any Funko Pops, thank you. That's what you studied in uni? It was television and media production is what I studied in uni. A little bit of journalism as well, because our two courses got taught at the same time. So it technically is mixed with journalism there. But it's television and media production is what I focused on. It's mainly for editing, because I, I had like... I love editing. Editing's a lot of fun. And that's what I wanted to really get into. Obviously, you know, things kind of change over time and everything. COVID kind of ruined a lot of things in that regard. You know, for instance, I was supposed to have a work placement for my final year, but COVID kind of saw against that. So I never even got my work placement, which was a shame because it was a really cool one. I was supposed to work at a board game company and help them with their live streams. Unfortunately, it didn't work out that way. Do you edit for people currently? Not at the moment, no. I mainly just edit for myself. You know, post little clips here and there. Go. Oh, good. Like I said, a lot of the stuff just kind of got a little bit disrupted. I did have some cool opportunities while I was at uni as well. I actually got to work with um, uh, Peter Molyneux a little bit too, the game director. I worked at his company for a little bit during the time. I don't know how much... I, I'm pretty sure I signed an NDA, so I don't think I can actually talk about it too much. But that was an interesting time. There we go. All good. I also can't remember how long the NDA lasts, so I'd rather not risk it. I'm pretty sure it was like five years ago, but I'd rather not risk it, you know? Yeah, that Peter Molyneux. Let's see. All good. All good. All good. It's kind of like a little work placement thing. It wasn't really like full work placement, though. I think I did get credit for it, because it is a thing that my teacher organized. There is an offer that is given to my teacher, and the teacher chose two students for it, and I was one of the students. So we did get credit for our course because of it. Which was nice, even if the thing that we worked on didn't come to fruition. Probably largely part to me, because I did something I probably shouldn't have done, but that's fine. May have made a joke they didn't like, but that's fine. See, Labyrinth are going good. All good. Like I said, I'd rather not risk the NDA. Let's just say that the company, there may have been some, like, little bit of drama around it. And I may have made a joke about that during the thing that I was working on, which probably didn't really go over well with them. It was meant to just be a lighthearted thing, and it didn't really turn out too well. But no, it, it was a good time at university. I do kind of miss it. Unfortunately, because of, like, you know, everything that happened in the, you know, the uh, lockdown era... I never really got an end to my university years, which was a shame. Like, no, I, I never really got a graduation or anything like that, which is kind of sad. I, I was actually kind of looking forward to that. Because the lockdown started on my final year. Like, I think the last couple months of my final year is when lockdown started. And therefore, you know, a lot of things we're supposed to do didn't really come to fruition, which is a shame. We had this whole plan as well. Like, for our final projects, our, our plan was to, like, rent out the cinema because the, the university I went into had a cinema. We are supposed to rent that out and, you know, display all of our final projects, order in, like, some takeout, have, like, a really nice party around it. But, of course, you know, none of that ever happened because of everything, which is really a shame. It's one of those things where I never feel like I actually ended university just because I never had, like an end point it just kind of fizzled out because of covid so it never feels like i ever actually finished university even though i did 
It's weird. But alas, you know. I still like editing though. Editing for me is a very relaxing thing. For me, editing is very much like forming a puzzle. Like you have all the pieces in front of you and you just kind of form it over time. And you see it go from like this one clip to the whole like end point. I think that's what I like most about it. Like seeing the process go from like the start to the end really feels like putting a puzzle piece together. I think it's the same reason I like, you know, Legos and stuff like that. It's cool seeing it go from one little brick to like this whole big ooh, scale thing. I think it's the same reason I like editing. You know, oh, good. I didn't really edit. I, I do want to get back into editing more. I would love to start making YouTube videos again at some point. It's just finding a good style that I like in terms of like editing and stuff like that. I've got ideas. It's just something I've got to really mess around with a little bit. There we go. But I still enjoy editing the occasional clip here and there, posting it to, you know, the the Twitters. There we go. I'm slow at it. I'm a little bit slow at it. I'm not the fastest of editors, but that's because I'm very much like, when I'm editing stuff, I rewatch it over and over and over, over again. Like, if I make a minor tweak to it, I've got to start from the beginning and watch it all over again, just to make sure the flow's okay. Because, you know, it's all about, like, creating a nice flow with all of it. Which, you know, it takes time. When you're doing lots of little edits, it, it definitely does take time. Go, oh, good. Okay, we just got to wait for all the customers to come through now. Also, I completely forgot I was supposed to do this order, wasn't I? That's fine, we'll do that in the morning. Boom. But no, editing's fun. I enjoy editing. Go. Need to do some uh, editing of clips again. I've also, uh, for those that know as well, I do post stuff onto like TikTok and YouTube Shorts as well from here and there. Just because, you know, I may as well if I'm editing the video for Twitter anyway. I usually like just do a little extra edit to put it on there as well. It's usually just the same stuff I put on Twitter anyway. So if you've seen it there, you'll see it there anyway. How's the beer sales looking? Let's have a look. Ah, uh, so decently. It looks like they've sold pretty well. We've still got loads more customers to work through towards the end of the day, though. So you won't know the full profit of today till the end. I think we've made a decent profit today. Then we need to focus on just getting everything restocked again. Oh, get all the regular stuff restocked and also get the beer restocked. Because you can only buy one bottle of each. Or, you know, one box of each. That's the most annoying yet satisfying part of editing. It's definitely a process. But just getting a really good flow with it. Like with editing in general, you really do get into like a groove with it once you get started. It's the sort of thing you can lose hours to without noticing. Because you really just get in like a full editing groove. Sometimes it takes some time to get into that editing groove though. And it's all about like finding the right way to do the edits too. Like, you know, in terms of like YouTube content and stuff like that, in terms of like stream content. It feels like it's always moving the style of videos that people like. I know when it comes to TikToks and stuff, most people go for like the text on screen. I I probably should do that, but I, I personally just don't like that. I don't see any f point in having the text on the screen sometimes. Like if it's like a constant thing, maybe, but it's only like certain words I see. I, I don't understand that form of editing, but I think it's one that I do want to try and understand. And maybe, you know, try and adapt in my own way. I think it's like to you what it does is like it helps punctuate certain things obviously you don't put every word but you punctuate the words that are like specifically attendant to the the clip or whatever that you know the most important parts basically sounds like adhd bait i mean potentially i mean flashing lights are quite nice it probably is something to do with engagement Maybe I need to start getting a bunch of Subway Surfer clips ready too. I hear that's pretty good. Maybe some Family Guy funny moments. When it comes to content making, I've got a very specific philosophy. Like, I know there's probably certain things I could do that would probably help me out quite a bit. But there's certain things I just won't let myself do. Like, you know, for that instance, I'm not never going to just put Subway Surfer or, like, you know, Minecraft Parkour... Or Family Guy funny moments at the bottom of a clip. It, it's an 
I don't know the right way to say it. It's like an integrity thing. I just don't want to do that. I'd rather make content that I would want to make, even if it doesn't, you know, work for the algorithm. I want to do things my own way. I'd rather, you know, get some form of success my own way rather than, like, just go for what's trendy. I'd rather just go for the stuff I want to do. Right, almost there. Last two customers of the day. <sighs> Cut your stream scenes into eighths. What's that even mean? Good clips, Blau. I, I think Blau's got a pretty good editor. That said, I do all the editing myself, which probably isn't the best, but it's just kind of where I am at the moment. I just enjoy editing myself. Okay, end the day with 4,000. Nice. Boop. How we looking? Nice. Soda, rice, cheese, parmesan. Rice is over here. That is, that's good. Soda, soda, soda. Boom. 3.25. And cheese, parmesan. Even though I believe you'll get the reach. It's all about what I want to put on there, though. Like, I don't think my content really leans itself too well towards clips. It's the reason why I never really did lots of edits when I did GTA. Because specifically, my GTA content never really lended itself well to clips. Like, you know, clips are meant to be like these short, like, 30-second snippets. But how do you, like, do chill into stream clips, you know? I, I never really knew a good way to do it. Just because of, you know, my style. I just don't think my style really suited it too well. With variety, I actually feel a lot more comfortable doing clips with it. I feel like I do get more moments that I think are clippable. Usually I clip them myself. Just because I, I, I'm very specific in like the way I like my things clipped. But that's the reason why I didn't do too much edits in terms of like GTA content. Just because my content didn't really lean itself too well. He's going to do well, but it's going to be algorithm friendly. Yeah, probably need to do some research into the algorithm. Probably would help. Also, let's get uh, all this stuff restocked today. So we need chicken. Four chicken. Boom. Then let's order, if I can afford it. Two of that, two of that, two of that. Two of everything new if I can afford it. Boom. With two of that, two of that, boom, boom. Two of that. Actually, no, we don't need the veal. We're pretty good on veal right now. We need sushi small. Sushi large. Steak, may as well get steak. Boom, getting a little bit pricey in there. Can I afford salmon? Two of that. Can I afford one of that? Ooh, okay. Uh, maybe just... Oh, it's still too expensive. Okay, we just get one of everything there. Boom. Everything else we're just going to have to restock tomorrow, I think, or as time goes on. I shall at least get things lined up for now. Let me just open up this... Actually, no, let, I'm going to give them a second to get everything restocked while I start making the list of what else we need to restock. Coffee. Do-do-do. Connor's very cozy and compared to people very high and you go go such a nice chase pace. I mean, that's just why I enjoy doing. I've talked a lot, of, a lot on it about... Yeah, ugh, sorry, words. I've talked a lot about it on stream before in terms of like making the thing that I want to make. But obviously, if I, I... I do know that, you know, I probably could get more reach if I was a lot more high energy, a lot more, you know... You know, a lot more of a high energy streamer, but that's just not who I am. Like for this sort of industry, you need to be able to do it for hours at a time consistently hours at a time and if you be something that you're not for hours at a time you're really going to get yourself burnt out so i'd rather just be myself do the stuff that i think i'm good at you know the stuff that i'd want to do and see how things go from there that's how i'd rather form my content at the very least and i enjoy enjoy doing chill stuff too as so let me just see we need uh, two chocolate, two tea, two milk. Chocolate. Two chocolate. Two tea. Two milk. Boom. I also do think I'm pretty good at the chill vibes. 
to candy to cake. Candy. Yeah, that's all good. Uh, okay, so I think we just got to open and hope things go well. So how much do we need for this order? We need $303. That's fine. Let me at least help get this stuff on the shelves. Boom. Sushi. Hopefully by the time we finish restocking this part, we'll be able to order some more. More of this stuff that I still don't know what it is. Boom. Do -do -do. More apple juice. Boom. There we go. I have, I, I'm very much enjoying going more down the variety route. I enjoy doing variety. I definitely need to lean more into the variety aspect of doing variety though. As I was saying at the beginning of stream, I've got a bad habit of just playing the same game to completion, which with these sort of games, completion is like hours and hours away. I need to get better at like spacing things out a little bit. You know, do different things every so often rather than just play the same game for weeks at a time. It's a habit that, I need that you know, kind of comes from streaming the same game for five years. It's just a habit that I need to get out of. So I think definitely next stream we're going to be trying a different game. And then eventually, obviously, we'll come back. And same with Stardew. I do plan to go back to Stardew too. It's just trying to space things out a little bit. Yeet the sushi. There we go. That's all good. Customers are coming in. Actually, can I restock the sushi myself? Nope, we already have plenty of it. That's fine. Yeah, yeet. There we go. Stardew is a horror game. There is a horror game coming out that's like Stardew soon, right? I remember seeing that at the recent um, gaming convention stuff. E3, what, what, Summer Game Fest. That honestly is one I'd love to try. I forget the name of it. it it's something graveyard, I'm pretty sure. I think that would be kind of a fun one because it does seem to be more like cozy gamer sort of thing with obviously some horror elements too. I just hope there's no jump scares. Th th that's the one element of horror that I don't like is jump scares. So is Minecraft. Minecraft can be turned into a horror game for sure. One day we'll get back into our Minecraft era. One day. Uh, collage of Atlas? Don't think I have, no. Okay, so 198 we need need 357 for this order that's fine should be there soon 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 as long as you're in the game i mean it kind of depends what mods you have too there's a lot of good mod packs to use oh come on almost there play D, &D. used to don't really play it much these days i've been a part of a few D, &D shows There's one um D, D show that I was part of for a while called Fable Scraps. I believe it's still running. I uh, was part of a Warhammer one and a Star Trek one for a couple years. It was fun. We don't really play it too much these days, D and D. Uh, come on, can I stock any more of the sushi? Display is but is that display full really? Place full. God damn it. Okay, that's fine. We'll just chuck that over here for now. Eh. Ah, perfect. We can do the order. So that is up to the candy, I'm pretty sure. We need cereal, cheese, pasta. We need do -do -do, cereal, cheese, pasta. Boom. With more cereal, cereal, sugar. Cereal, sugar, boom. With flour, bread, water, milk. Do flour, bread, water, milk. I'm pretty sure we need the eggs too. Some of those eggs. Just trying to keep on top of the stock that we didn't restock yesterday. Yep, the eggs, perfect, perfect. Then we need oil and flour. Oil, flour, orange juice. Oil, flour, orange juice. 
Boom. With... Oh, God, we are rolling low a lot of things. Sprunk and... Oh, God. Okay, I think we need... Two of this. Two of this. Then we also need... Both the cheeses. Boom, boom. Two cheeses. Then we need honey, egg. Honey, egg. Yeah, we're basically out of stock of everything. It, it, what I'm noticing now is we're just running a stock of everything. I mean, luckily, it seems that the shelves in here are pretty decent at the very least. It's just restocking the stock room at the moment. There's nothing that seems to be desperately going out of stock up here. Okay, that's all good. Where are we up to? Egg. Then we need sugar as well. Sugar. Do, 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 do. Wait for the next checkout. Oh, well, sprung making. Sprung, sprite, legally distinct sprite, whatever you want to call it. Green drink. It's the green drink. We need fries. We need pizza. Fries, pizza, uh, potato, cereal, potato. Get four of those. Cereal, two of those. Okay, so we need $387 for that. That might be a tomorrow order at this point. Unless. Come on, come on. 25 more dollars. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, just one checkout, one checkout before it turns into 9 p.m. There we go, perfect. We've got a whole pile of produce out here. We'll leave the restockers to do that. They know what they're doing. All right, perfect. Everything should be at least back on track now. I'm hoping. I think we can still end the day probably at like $1,000 if we're lucky. We've still got plenty more customers to go. Plenty more customers are currently trapped in the labyrinth. How's the chicken looking? Chicken's okay too. How's it looking up here? Out of the chicken again. God damn it. Always this damn chicken. Boom. I really wish I could buy more of it. Actually, I do have the fridge space if I wanted to. Uh, hold on. Do they need any sushi? Damn, sushi is not selling today, is it? Oh. Come on. Any more? Okay, that's fine. We'll just chuck it. Is this price too much? Is that, is that why people aren't buying it? Do we price that too high? It's $21. No, that's that, that's a good price. We're making like a cent more. That's it. Everything over here is looking good, though. Beer is looking good. Let's see license-wise. What do we want to buy for the next license? I think we need to buy more licenses. Today is a license day for sure. I'd say probably next what we should get is the stuff for the freezer. Because we've got plenty of freezer space. Let's see. Uh, let's get more chicken. We're selling so much. I did actually increase it already. Though it might be worth increasing it again. Okay, 2,800 is what we need for the next license. Because we've got so much freezer space to use. Let's try like 1,250. They might still buy it, who knows? Oh, we need to change the price of Parmesan too. I forgot about that. Oh my god, yeah, we really need to increase that price. Perfect. Everything else here looking okay? Let's change that to 4.25. Butter, yep, still looking good. Cheese, still looking good. Everything's still looking pretty good right now. Okay, yeah, we should end the day with some decent profit then. Is there any weather we could put like a random checkout? I really don't think there's any more space we can use right now. Everything's being fully used. I don't know. <laughs> and the restocking dudes are hard at work making it through this whole pile over here. In the morning, what we'll do is just do one more run through. How are we doing on the loan as well? H how much is the loan every day? That's going to be... Hmm. Uh, remaining pay, 13 days. Yeah, we've got a lot left to pay off, but that's fine. 
We'll work through it. We should be okay. We're just going to remember that it's costing us roughly about $400 every day in terms of utilities and um, workers too. That That is good to know. Just so we can price around that. Uh, growth, bills. Yeah, the bills are fine. Okay, yeah, we're making some decent progress. You saw that room temperature carbox seems healthy. That's a good point. We should put it into direct sunlight instead. Good call. We don't have any chicken nuggets just yet, unfortunately. Hopefully soon. I hope we get dino tendies. In the stock room? I don't think we can, no. Like, actually, can I put fridges in here? No, you can't. You can only put the, the racks in here. Hold on. Box up. Drop. Boom. Move this. Drop. And boom. Organization. Perfect. I love putting my paint just at the edge of a shelf. What's the bucket for? That's for paint. We use it to paint the walls in here. And we just had some paint left over. Perfect. I'm still walking through my labyrinth. No more teleporting in here. Actually, let's see. How long does it take for them to walk from here to the exit? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four. 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32. It takes 32 seconds for a customer to walk from the checkout all the way to the exit to get from this checkout right here to that exit right there. I think that's a good labyrinth so far. One day we'll be able to expand it to the point where it takes them a full day to make it through there. That's the dream, one day. Oh, is that everyone? That's everyone. Boop. Any profit today? Ooh, not the best profit, but that's fine. Only price change is the seal wheel. Yeah, that's still a good price. Everything else looks good. Nice, nice, nice. Okay. So let's have a look in the stock room real quick. How are we looking in here? Let me get the market up ready. Do our morning order of chicken. Ooh, they still got so much to work through in here, don't they? Hmm. Was there anything that we didn't order? I can't remember now, to be honest with you. Uh. Because they're just going to start walking, working through everything over there. Everything over here is fine. Hmm. Imagine they add a mascot. If I could put a mascot costume on, I would. You'd have to stand out here spinning the sign. Have a, you know, a minotaur. A, a minotaur costume that we could have. That'd be perfect for the labyrinth. Okay, so everything's looking okay. Do we need more big sushi? I think we need more big sushi. Big sushi and that lasagna. Sushi. Big sushi and... I forget what it's actually called. It's like moosh something. I call it Z Lizagna. And purchase. There we go. Perfect. Alright. Everything looking okay. We have so much veal. Oh god, we got so much veal. Jesus. Maybe we should do a discount on the veal. We apparently aren't going through much of it. Are we overpricing it? It's not even overpriced. I guess maybe we do 11.5. Why have we got so much? Did I actually order too much? I don't remember ordering this much veal. And if I didn't order it, where did it come from? Okay, maybe I should help them out just a little bit here. Potatoes. Tea. Just so I have a better idea of what is in stock and what isn't in stock. Because they, the way they work through all this is that they're prioritizing the stuff that's out of stock in the shelves first. Rather than what's out of stock here in the stock room. That's how their priority works, from my understanding. More chocolate. 
So just gotta make sure I don't accidentally over order on some stuff. Just put the flower over here. Okay. Are you serious? Hold on. Can I move like one box of flour in here? Is there room? Oh god damn it, seriously? Okay, that's fine. I'm just gonna chuck that here for now. Put the full box over here. Do -do -do. Like the sushi, the sushi remains in the sunlight until we have room. All sushi and dairy products are kept in direct sunlight until we can actually find the space for them. It adds the flavor and the texture. There we go. Boom. If you don't like it, you can get your sushi from some other labyrinth. Oh wait, you can't. We're the only labyrinth in the city that has sushi. We're gonna do go to somewhere that specifically sells sushi and isn't a labyrinth? Like hell you will. You will come to the labyrinth. No other choice. If you go to another store, I'm gonna buy that store and turn that into a labyrinth too out of spite. Boom. Regulated sound at that statement. It's fine. What are they gonna do? Close down the labyrinth? They gotta make their way through it first. That's the reason why our store hasn't been shut down just yet. You know that episode of SpongeBob where they kill the health inspector? It's a similar sort of thing. And by that I mean we kill the health inspector. <laughs> That's what I mean by that. Go some more water. More salmon. Do I have space for salmon? I do, perfect. Do do do. I think the Labyrinth's a good store. Every store needs a gimmick, you know. Our gimmick is just a little bit more. Oh my god, did I I ordered too much again? God damn it. That's fine, it'll all get used eventually. Okay, I think we could probably open up the store at this point. Yes, yeah, open up the store. They seem to be pretty caught up now. Boom. I think we need to order more Parmesan though. Boom. Unless this is the Parmesan? No, this is orange juice. Boom. Oh god, we're out of more stuff too. Hold on. Let's start getting our shopping list ready. Spaghetti. Salt. We can order a decent bit of salt. Because we can store a lot of it. Uh, peanut butter and soda. Peanut butter. Soda. And... And... Purchase. Perfect. Samples were a thing in this game? Nothing gets sampled. No one's gonna steal from my labyrinth. You think I'd give something out for free? No one gives anything out for free these days. Why do you think demos stop being a thing for the most part? Nothing comes free. Okay, we need to order more of the cake. Boom. More tuna, more oil. This is the capitalist society that we live in. This is a capitalist labyrinth. The worst kind of labyrinth. You see, that's the true horror of this game. Our evil doesn't come from the labyrinth. It comes from the fact that we're a capitalist. That's where the true evil comes from. Flour. Boom. With more milk. Boom. We'll work through this while that's all getting ordered. Oh yeah, I used to play a bunch of those game demos. I used to have a gaming magazine I had ordered in. That specifically came with a bunch of different demos to try. But you know, demos are kind of a thing of the past these days. Early access is demos for the most part. There we go, move this here. I feel like early access did kind of replace demos for the most part. There we go, boom. I kind of miss ordering in magazines sometimes. But I remember as a kid, I didn't really order them to read them. I ordered them for the free stuff it came with. Hey, mashed potatoes. Thanks for the five months. Much appreciated. Hope you enjoy those beautiful goblin and max motes as always potatoes. Appreciate the support. Now, there is still some demos out there. Just not as much as they used to be. I find it's typically AAA games that don't do demos anymore. It's mainly indie games that do demos more so than anything else. 
at least from what I've seen. Let's see. So we're waiting on this. Boom. What was that one thing? Oh, I remember. I, I used to order like this uh, Star Wars little like statue thing. That was my favorite. Mainly because I got a little statue of Max Rebo, my favorite Star Wars character. Actually, I have it on my shelf just over there. It is a prized possession, just like my grommet mug. Max Rebo, best character. All he wants to do is jam. And I respect the hell out of that. He doesn't care about the family drama that happens in Star Wars. He just cares about jamming. No matter what. There we go. Move that up there. I refuse to believe that he's dead. He is not dead. He is eternal. He's a jizz master. Which is the name of jazz in Star Wars. There we go. Okay, so we're doing good. We're doing good. Need more sugar, more egg. More sugar. Boom. More egg. Boom. Is Jar Jar a Sith? I think that's a fun theory, but I doubt that's ever actually going to be a thing. Cheese. Hey, confused. Boom, boom. Do we need a little some more of the other cheese too, may as well. Boom. I feel like people like the idea of ja Darth Jar Jar, but if it was actually a thing, you know people would be complaining about it, how stupid of an idea it was. People only think it's cool because it didn't happen. But if it did actually happen, it probably wouldn't have been as well received. You know how Star Wars fans are. <laughs> They're never happy. Go put the mozzarella over here. Boom. More sugar over here. It definitely would have been a bit of a plot twist for sure. But would it, have been, would it have been a good plot twist or would it have been a good plot twist in the terms of, like, is it a good plot twist in terms of, like, it adds to the story? Or is it a good plot twist in terms of shock factor? That's kind of what you've got to decide with that. I feel like it would have been more of a shock factor thing more so than anything else. I want to snow to be Darth Jar Jar. Again, I don't think that would have been well received. I do like that they're kind of playing on the Darth Jar Jar thing. I think there's like a spin-off series Lego thing going on. I think it's funny they're playing on that. There we go. It definitely would have been interesting to see where the prequels would have gone if he did still go down that direction. If Jar Jar didn't have as much of a hated sort of response. It would have been interesting to see what the original plan for it was. So I've seen the vid like the little videos people put out on it. It definitely seems that like something was going on there. But it probably would have largely been like a shock factor thing more so than anything else. Butter. Let's order like four bits of butter. Boom. With... Uh, we'll order one more bit of fries. Fries. Boom. There we go. I still think the biggest flaw of the uh, the sequel trilogy is the fact they didn't lean more towards the whole, you know, Stormtrooper angle of it all. I think that generally could have been such an interesting story for them to go down with Finn's character. It's a shame they just forgot Finn was a character for the rest of the movies. It's a damn shame, because that would have genuinely been such an interesting storyline. Boom. I still, to this day, one of the more memorable things about the sequels was the traitor scene. And they just never built upon that whatsoever. Go. Boom. Clone Wars was way better than what it should have been. I definitely agree, but there's also some very bad episodes of the Clone Wars too. There's a reason why there's like a list out there of Clone Wars episodes to watch and ones not to watch. People forget about the Jar Jar, the C-3PO, the R2-D2 episodes. That weren't exactly the best. But also, you also got to remember, it's meant to be a kid's show too. So obviously, there's going to be some more lighthearted episodes along like the more darker sort of ep episodes. And sometimes you've got to remember that things designed for kids are probably going to be designed for kids. Okay. 
Do we mo need more chicken? We need more goddamn chicken. Every damn time. Actually, our stockroom's looking good right now, though. It's really starting to build up a bit more now. Except for bread. Bread and milk. We need bread and milk. Bread. Milk. Boom. I will fully say, though, I'm definitely a Star Wars fanboy. It's the thing I grew up with. I feel like no matter what happens with the series, I'm always going to support it in some way. Just because I grew up with it. Always will hold a special place in my heart. Coffee. Boom. There we go. But it's also one of those franchises that probably will never, ever die. Definitely an eternal franchise. Okay, this is all looking decent. Maybe order more steaks would be good in the morning. Just gotta wait for them to work through all of that. Let's see. Both fandoms are, fa are rabid. It's very rare for there ever to be a fandom that isn't rabid, unfortunately. It's just the way fandoms typically go. Even the best sort of fandoms will have their, like, small groups of rabid fans, which are usually the loudest, too. It's just how fandoms typically go. People are just very passionate about it, you know? And sometimes it can definitely be a little bit harmless. Other times, not really so much so. So, I mean, like, even GTRP community, it's lovely for the most part, but there's definitely some rabid parts of the fan base too. It just happens with every fandom, ultimately. And as usual, like I said, the rabid parts usually are a lot louder than the non-so-rabid parts. Good. Okay, so we're just going to wait for these last few customers to be done now. <sighs> Lovely. Oh, good. So, yeah, actually, today ending in decent profit. The amount of profit that we have there compared to all the stock in here is actually really good. We might, hopefully, be able to afford another license, potentially. Hmm... Let's see. That more fondest franchise that have died quietly than those kept alive as zombie corpse of their former self. Honestly, that's fair. What would you consider the TF2 fandom in that way? Because the TF2 fandom is still strong, but that franchise is a zombie at the moment. That game is 100% a zombie. It's only being kept alive by the fandom. We could, that is a good point. We could get ourselves out of debt instead. That would probably be a smart idea. Then we take out another loan for the next license. Easy peasy. Know about TF2 as hats? Well, to give you a reference point, I'm pretty sure the last TF2 update was in 2017. That's the last time the game got updated. But it's still got, like, an extremely strong player base. It feels like Valve could really profit off it, but for some reason they just don't. It's weird. There we go. Candy and coffee. Boom, boom, boom. It's so weird that that game's been abandoned considering, like, how strong of a fan base it has. You know, to this day, there's still, like, you know, SFM and Gmod animations being made for it. There's still such a strong community around that game. Yet the developers have just all but abandoned it. Minus, like, one or two developers that try and help with the bot crisis. Like, even through the bot crisis, people still play the game pretty strongly. Think of it this way. By the time, like, in the time span between now and the last TF2 update, Overwatch has died twice, in reference point. Overwatch has released two games since the last update of TF2, and it has outlived both of them somehow. That's how strong the fan base for that game is. Obviously, I do know Overwatch is still going, but it's not as strong as it used to be. See, all good. Let's see how the stock's doing. How much do I need to fully pay off my loan right now? Let's see. Do we pay off early? Yeah, screw it. Let's pay it off early. 
Let's see. Then we just need to order some more rice and flour. Do do do. Rice. I mean, in my opinion, the thing that killed off Overwatch was the esports scene. That's what ultimately killed off Overwatch in my mind. But the fact they lean more towards the esports scene more so than like building up the story, I think that's what killed Overwatch initially. Because pretty much everything that was fun about the game kind of got stripped away in favor for the competitive scene. Like for me, the, the turning point for Overwatch is when they turned it so that you couldn't play multiple of the same character in a game. Like for instance, you can't form a team of six Winstons. In my opinion, that's when Overwatch really started to do a downturn. Because that is when quick play just became competitive practice. That it just basically reflected competitive without the rank. And at that point for me, the, the fun of it just kind of got lost. I know they also released a game mode specifically where you could play multiple of the same character. But that's different. Like, it's different when you're playing a regular game with a regular team comp. And then you just see six Winstons fly over the wall. That's a lot different than expecting everyone to play six Winstons. It was more funny to see it randomly happen. More so than expecting it to happen. And it was fun as well because you knew that you were probably going to lose because you played six Winston. But that's not the point. You're playing the game to have fun, not to win. I remember like playing six Torbjorn as well. And all my friends in VC would just be doing really bad Torbjorn impressions the entire time. Ah, oh, so much fun. And then they ruined the game by basically just making it competitive. Which meant the, com the casual players left, leaving only the competitive players. And then the competitive scene of it just started to drop too. Meaning they were left with next to no one for the most part. And again, that's not even mentioned the fact that they haven't even built upon the story. I think how big the cinematics were for Overwatch. Like everyone was talking about those cinematics when they came out. And then as soon as the game released, they did like maybe one or two more cinematics. And then did nothing for the story. Absolutely nothing for the story. I think they've progressed the story like one day in eight years. That's kind of it. It's literally just them all grouping together and then someone, Monsieur, is Overwatch back? And then Winston going, yep. And then that's it. Then they didn't build upon it anywhere from there. That's basically where the story went. Go. And then they cancelled the, the the single player, or the, the story mode, which is meant to build on that. God, it, I, I just, it sucks talking about Overwatch because it is so much lost potential in it. They generally could have had like a year long span, like a decade spanning franchise with it, but they just so, so mishandled it. Like they could have generally had like such a killer franchise and they sacrificed all of it for esports. It's such a shame. And I think at this point, there's nothing they can really do to recover that. They've 100% lost the trust of most of their player base. Especially with the whole, you know, rug pull of the PvE stuff too. Basically releasing a whole second game with the idea of it all being PvE. You know, the main attraction of it, different from the main one, is the fact that it has PvE. Then they get rid of the PvE. I don't think anyone's ever going to trust them ever again after that. It's just so silly. Okay, that's all good. Everything's in stock, looking good. Yeah, as you can tell, I'm a little bit passionate about a little bit passionate about Overwatch. In terms of like, you know, story part of it. Like I I I was really into the story of Overwatch when it was being released. Like I was reading all the comics, you know, rewatching the animations over and over. Like even to this day, I still rewatch the Bastion one and the Reinhardt one. Those still are like little tear jerkers for me. But then they just didn't do anything to build upon that whatsoever. And it's such a damn shame. It's, it had such potential. I, th I think that's ultimately what's so frustrating about Overwatch. Is it had such potential behind it. Like you know, the Sombra ARG as well. I remember like staying up looking into that. But then they just fumbled all of it so hard. Just such a damn shame. And you know, the game is still obviously going to this day and it still does have its strong player base. But I feel like it could have just been so much more. Like, it, you could easily see it having like its own series of, you know, kind of like Arcane for League of Legends. 
you could definitely see at this point if they'd focus more on the story it would be to that point they probably would have like specific story games they would have tv shows maybe even like a movie at some point but they squandered it all just to build up the competitive scene that eventually just kind of slowly but surely died off it's just such a shame so much potential behind that franchise just for nothing but oh well who knows maybe i'll have a comeback at some point i just highly doubt it at this point mentioned lord they've been going for 15 plus years strong with league of legends i actually do kind of like the lore of league of legends i think it has genuinely an interesting lore but that's because they have focused a lot of stuff on the lore with league of legends let me personally i don't like the game of league of legends i played it a lot when i was younger and I was so toxic to the point where I've sworn off every competitive game since. League of Legends is the reason I don't like competitive games. I've just sworn it off ever since then. Because I, I was like extremely toxic back then. And I did not like the way I was. Back in, I think it's like I was 15, 16. I've changed my ways. I've become a better person after quitting League of Legends. But I still like the lore. The like, arcane is amazing. Easily like, in my opinion, the best like video game tv show slash you know movie whatever you'd want to classify it as easily the best in my opinion both in terms of story and in terms of style and soundtrack too the soundtrack of arcane was amazing i really can't wait to see what they do with that series in the future eggs too expensive are they expensive they're not expensive i've seen edge runners too edge runners is a pretty close one too I know it's just something about arcane it's the mix of like you know the, the unique visuals the way the characters were written the story the music I said the music in it is ph phenomenal i really can't wait to see what they do with season two and then because they say that season two is the end of like that story but i really hope they do continue but in like different areas of the league world because league of legends has like such an expansive lore it would generally be interesting to see them tackle other parts of it. There's one of those things that I've got genuine faith in it since the first season. I think they could really make something of it. It's what Overwatch could have been, potentially. If they had not, you know, squandered all of it. Yeah, they're basically, I think what people have been talking about is that they're going to be focused on different parts of the world. Because, you know, Piltover and Zorn is only a very small part of League of Legends. And I think the thing that I love about Arcane as well is that they don't like they only introduce characters if it matters to the story like considering how you know expansive the character roster is of League of Legends they could easily like name drop characters have like little cameo of characters that then just go and do nothing but every character they introduce they make sure that it's an actual character not just like hey here's this guy like some series end up doing I, Star Wars is pretty bad for that where they introduce a character mainly just to say hey here's this character more so than introducing them as a character but Arcane did it really good in terms of like there's such a small roster of characters in there but they utilize them all perfectly like really if you think about it in terms of the game I think there's only like five or six characters from the game in that series like not even any random ones that are introduced there's like what victor jace vi caitlin jinx uh singed echo heimerdinger and that's kind of it for the most part I, I don't i can't remember any other ones that are introduced but i also think that is why arcane worked as well as it did it didn't rely on you knowing league of legends like, it's a series that you can watch without knowing anything about League of Legends, without tainting yourself by learning about League of Legends. Overwatch could have been so good. It could have been like that, but it just wasn't. Halo as well. Uh, Halo's another series that's definitely fallen off over the years. That's a rough one because I grew up with Halo. I still believe one day it'll return to its Halo 3, Halo Reach era, but every game they release just kind of dwindles that ever so often it's just like a steep steep decline with it still have faith maybe someday they'll be able to recover that though maybe someday 
versus blues is such an amazing spin on it again though red versus blues won those series that just went on for too long i know they finished off that uh, red versus blue recently i've been meaning to watch that like they released the final season but it's also just one of those things that definitely kind of outstayed its time it's good that for shows to have an ending i, I think it's very important in, in shows i think that's why like arcane i'm i think it's going to be good is because they are ending that story at season two they're not going to do like oh this is super popular we're just going to extend this for as long as possible if they do extend it they're, they're going to be focusing on different stories which is the way that it should be done like you know think to like i feel like star wars is a bad habit of that where they you think of like mandalorian that was good for the first two seasons but it feels like one of those series that's just going to go on forever to the point where it gets cancelled and then never have an ending compared to like andor which is amazing and is only going to have two seasons therefore it has an actual ending to it i think that is an issue with a lot of shows there's just no ending eternal shows just don't really work for the most part i think it's very important that shows do have a stick strict ending they stick with everything good okay we'll restock in the morning but we're doing pretty good money wise at the moment i think we could probably buy that other license soon oh Ooh, sorry watch the german show dark the show that ended perfectly i don't think i have seen that one no it's very rare these days for shows to have a good ending or you know a show to have any form of ending whatsoever the amount of shows out there that just get cancelled and then never ever get any sort of satisfying ending is a shame mainly a lot to do with streaming shows to be honest those are where they have it the worst come on get through these last customers yeah do we'll do a round of restocking in the morning but i think maybe we could buy that new license how much was it again the new license if we want to get more stuff for the freezer that is crab hot sauce ice cream that's 2800 oof we probably need to take out another loan if we want to get that we'll see how much we end the day with maybe we take out one more loan just to get that because i really do want to start filling up these freezers oh time travel show I have to look into that. Is it, um, you say it's German. Is it like subtitled? Is it like in German then subtitled? I'm fine with subtitles personally. It just means that you spend more focus on the show. Oh no, obviously, you know, I will watch it in, I, I prefer to watch things in like the way that it was meant to be watched. I, I'm never really the biggest fan of dubs. I don't really watch much anime personally, but when I do, it's always got to be sub, not dub. There we go. All good. Get through the last part of it. Yeah, he's the end of the day with like 3,000 or so. I think there is um, definitely some good dubs out there. Like, I always think the Full Metal Alchemist dub was pretty good, but I don't know a lot of them do kind of miss the mark i always think to the one punch man uh like dub mainly because the voice of saitama the main character is nothing like how his voice is in the, the japanese version like his japanese one is kind of like you know a little bit silly you know kind of he sounds confused half the time but then in the dub he's just a generic anime man and it just does not work whatsoever. It completely changes the vibe of the character. But, you know, it, it, it's all um, personal preference at the end of the day. That's kind of what it comes down to. I think um, Dungeon Meshi had a pretty decent dub too. But I, I prefer to watch it sub. It, it's mainly because, like, I have a bad habit of second screening things. But when I have the subs on, I need to be engaged with it. I need to watch it. Rather than, you know, I just you know play hearthstone or something whilst having in the background that i miss half the story points but with the sub i need to focus on it therefore you know i actually do properly watch it done for the day done for the day but i'm not like any sort of elitist when it comes to that if you enjoy the dubs you enjoy the dubs 
At the end of the day, all it does come down to is personal preference. I think dubs can definitely be good too. Da, 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 boom. 2.25. There we go. Let's see how we're doing stock-wise. You okay there, dude? Let me get rid of that. Is it this? What are you getting stuck on? They keep just getting stuck on random boxes in here for some reason. Alright, let's see. So we need coffee, yogurt, chocolate. Coffee. Yogurt. And chocolate. Boom. Chocolate, milk, tea. Milk and tea. Also, I definitely highly recommend Dungeon Meshu for those who haven't watched it. Very good anime. Boom. Candy cake cereal. Candy cake cereal. Candy cake or both. And then cereal. Boom. With some pasta. Pasta. Boom. With some cheese. Uh, actually, no, was it? No, it's pasta. Wait, no, was it? What did I just order? I forgot what I just ordered. Did I order pasta? I did. I was going to order something else. I think I was supposed to order the cheese and I forgot to. Cheese with sugar. Boom. I strive to be like Senshi from Dungeon Meshi. It's honestly one of the reasons why I've been trying to get into cooking. I, I, I strive for his vibe. One day I hope to achieve it. Okay, then we need cereal, oil, flour. Cereal, oil, flour. Boom. Cereal, oil, flour with milk. Milk. Boom. We also need some spaghetti and orange juice. Orange juice is going quite popular recently. With orange juice. We need sugar and soda. Sugar with soda. Boom. Order that. Soda, honey, and cheese. Honey, cheese. I think we're probably making it our way through most of the stuff today. Probably going to be using most of our money today. Potatoes, need two of those bad boys. How much chicken do we need to order? Four chicken again. God, it really is every morning we need four chicken. Then we need to dedicate even more space to chicken. Oh, we need to order. Oh, we need to order everything in terms of beer. Can we afford that though? Let's see. Products. Let's see. Can I order two, two, two? Two. Two. Boom. Two. Two. Okay, that's a little bit too much. Maybe one less of that. Boom. And we need the hummus too. You need the hummus and the chips. I think I actually already ordered that, didn't I? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I did. Then, oh, we need more salmon. Salmon and big sushi. I'll get that on order ready, but I can't order it now. Sushi. Boom. Big sushi. And we'll open up the store while we have that with all this. I don't know why we're going through so much chicken. It really is our main export. I even increased the price of it and it's still selling out. I might even increase the price again. Actually, yeah, screw that. Let's, let's go increase the price of chicken again. Basically, I'm going to keep increasing the price of the chicken until there's a day where I end up with some left on the shelves. Like, left on the stock shelves. Only then will I change it. More tea. Boom. But no, I think after today, we should be able to buy another license. Boom. If I need to take out another loan, I'll just take out another loan. 
hummus. Do do do. Boom. Don't think hummus is too popular, but at least we got it in stock. More orange juice. Boom. More parmesan. Please ignore all the stuff that's getting run over right now. Again, it adds flavor and it adds texture. Sure, there may be a few broken eggs, but that's fine. If they buy it, it's on their it's their fault, not mine. Everyone always checks that beforehand anyway. It's always important to check the eggs before you buy them. More tea. More cheese. Boom. I at least want to try and get the, the freezers filled out best I can. That's the one to order the freezer thing next. More chicken. Vodka. Doot. There we go. More of this. Boom. I don't know how we got to those conversations. I don't know how we spiraled from Overwatch to there. I can't remember what started that conversation now. Boom. TLDR, there's a lot of game companies out there that squander their potential. I think too many companies focus on the competitive side rather than try and build up anything else. But that's also come from someone that doesn't really enjoy competitive games, so take that with a grain of salt. Is esports still really a big thing? I, I mean, I don't really follow it, obviously, but is it still, like, a big thing? Some of that. I just don't follow it anymore, obviously. I feel like it's probably not as big as it used to be. Milk, 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 milk. I remember it's like a titan of the gaming industry, the esports scene. These days, I don't really know. League, not sure about anything else. I mean, League was always pretty big in terms of the esports scene. I'm assuming the Valorant's probably pretty big in the esports scene too, right? That seems like a pretty esportsy sort of game. More oil. When's the cozy esports scene gonna get started? I wanna compete for coziness. I will win. That's when the real competitive side of me comes out. I don't want people to see the competitive side of me. I don't wanna see the competitive side of me anymore. It's nasty. Again, like I said, one of the reasons why I stay away from those sort of things these days. I know what I was like in the past. I'd rather not return there. I'm a better man now. I don't need any competitive games in my life. Hearthstone Battlegrounds is as far as I'm going to go. TFT as well. Then only play games like Valorant with friends. Difficult to feel competitive with friends. So I'm just trying to make sure I keep care of the throat. It's been a little bit sore today. All good, all good. So how much do I need again? I need like 2,800, right? What if... Let me order that real quick. What if... What if I take out another loan? Buy another loan, get the license, $2,800. Then... What would I need? Oh, I need a pretty big loan for that, though. Do need to make sure I have enough money at the end of the day to pay my employees, too. Hmm. I do want to buy that. Hmm. Couldn't find Sushi Lodge? What do you mean? Okay, I'm going I'm to buy that. Hold on. Let me just turn the... Actually, no, no. I'm going to wait until tomorrow. We'll see how the profits look at the end of the day. I think we should be pretty all right. I just noticed that it's 6 p.m., so there's no point really doing it. Rather not risk it, you know. We've already got some space designated for the pizza. We put pizza next to pizza because, you know, pizza next to pizza makes sense. Then we can start, like, maybe put ice cream here. Move the rest of it down here. 
Should be alright. At least we're getting a bit more stock in. I feel like I should have done this a while ago. <laughs> Looking at the levels that a lot of this stuff came available, I feel like maybe the labyrinth put us a little bit behind in progress. Like, if you look at it, the ice cream was unlocked at level 25. I'm currently at level 35. <laughs> I feel like I may be a little bit far behind where I'm supposed to be. Alas, that's just how it be. It's all because of a focus on that damn labyrinth. How, what is the lengthy N license then? N license is more beer with whiskey and wine. Ooh, it's not too bad. Yeah, it's like storybooks. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff. This game is actually really big. I feel like if you get, it's going to take like hours for us, not even hours, weeks to get to the end of this game. It feels like it's very, very expansive. Hmm. Okay, we'll see how things go. Might be a game that we, we revisit in the future. But let's at least try and get as, as filled as, uh, as filled up as much as possible. Let's wait for these customers to be done. Looks like today's going to be a decent day for profit. Most of our stock room should be restocked now, too. Yes, yeah, looking, uh, looking relatively decent. Most of it is stocked. I think we can maybe sacrifice one day of it being not full stocked in order to get new things in stock. I mean, ice cream can't be that expensive. I, I doubt the freezer stuff is going to be like, you know, ex as expensive as this stuff is. This stuff is meant to be the more expensive stuff. A semi-serious RP store? I could form a really good semi-serious RP store. Now, honestly, our store would be a lot more further along if we didn't focus on the labyrinth element. Like, look how many fridges we have. There's no need for us to have this many fridges. Now, we definitely went a little bit overkill in order to get the labyrinth the way we wanted it. But it's fine. You gotta play into the bit. I do love me some good bits after all. Who doesn't love some good bits? Are we really out of the beer again? I guess we are out of the kegs. Weirdly popular. That's fine, that's fine. Let's just wait for all the customers to be done. Should end the day easy at like maybe 2,500? Now, I think we get a $2,000 loan, get the new license, get the new stuff in stock, then everything else left over we use to restock the stock room. I think that'd be a good way to do it. Good strategy. Stratagem. Yes, yeah, strategy. Everything all looking good. I mean, the, the shelves seem pretty okay. Relatively okay. Nothing's like desperately going out of stock. Except the potatoes, but they seem to constantly go out of stock. I feel like the potato is going to be like a chicken situation. Speaking of, how much chicken do we have? We're still at selling out of chicken every day. Even though we increase the price like... How much more? It's almost two whole dollars above the market price. You know what? Screw it. We're going to make it 13.5. I need to see how high we can go with it. Before customers start saying, you know what, maybe we don't need chicken. People love their goddamn chicken. That's fine. We'll just wait for the day to be done. Take a nice sip to stay hydrated. As always, make sure y'all are staying hydrated too. And yeah, the prices seem to be okay. I'm surprised how expensive the sushi is. I'm also surprised that, like, Sushi Lodge, that's $17 average cost. Why is it, like, so close? you think it'd be a lot more expensive, the Sushi Lodge. But for some reason, it isn't. How's the hummus? Hummus looking good. Yep, all looking good. Now we just wait. Well, the last four customers isn't too bad. Again, process-wise, this would be a lot faster if we had that third cashier. But, you know, we just don't have the room for it in the labyrinth. 
We'd have to reorganize everything to accommodate that. Which we just couldn't do right now. I spent so long getting this labyrinth functional. So, so long. Was it worth it? Probably not. But, you gotta do it for the bit. Big thing in streaming, you gotta commit to the bit. Big thing in life, really. You gotta commit to the bit. And boom. There we go. Perfect. Ale and peanut butter. Peanut butter. Change that to five. It said pale ale, right? Is this it? Ah, uh, was it one of these ones? Piss? Oh, maybe it was this one. Change that to 2.75. Okay, all looking good. Let's get this new license. Let's get a loan, and I want to get this new license. We need more money. Loan. Bank. $2,000 loan again, please. We're good for it, trust. Let me get... Boom. Then we do the usual, buy one of each. That is hot sauce. Ice cream. That actually wasn't as much as I thought it was going to be. Boom. One of each. Purchase. This wasn't on the order, but that's fine. Salmon. Hot sauce. Let's... Ooh, where should we start stocking this? Let's stock this over here. Hot sauce. With... Ice cream. Ketchup. Boom. I've got some ideas where I want to put that stuff. We'll put that next to the honey. Sources for sources. This is crab legs. Hey, Ember! Thanks for the gifted sub. Much appreciated. Hope you enjoy those beautiful goblin and maximotes, courtesy of Ember. Appreciate the support as always. Go slap that there. Lastly, we have... Ooh. Hold on. Place that there. Move that there. Move that. Boom. Okay, so sources. Sources will go by the honey. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah. Yeet. 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 There we go. Change that price to four dollars. Next, we'll put up the. So that was that. That now we'll put up the ketchup. I'll go like so. Boom. Boom. Yeah, yeet. Then we've got... I think this is mayo? I kind of thought this is mustard or mayo. Oh, it's mayo. Yummy. Make sure to set those prices. Oh, why is mayo so expensive? Jesus. Is it like 10.5? Ketchup. Yeah, why is the mayo so much more expensive? 2.3.25. Boom. Then what else? We've got crab legs. Is this freezer? Yep, freezer. That'll be $10. With... Ice cream? We'll put ice cream. I feel like putting the ice cream over here. In this little one. All on its own. Scratch that. We're going to put it here instead. There we go. Perfect. That'll be $5. That is some expensive ice cream. But that's fine. With pizza. Now, how much is the price going to be different? And we'll just stock this over here since we can't store anymore. Let's see. That's going to be... So that's $5. Oh my god. That is so much more expensive. Okay, so that's going to be... Let's do $9 for that. That's an expensive pizza. God damn. Alright, that should be everything. Now, the rest of the money, let's go see what else needs to be restocked. 
We need to change, move this dude again real quick. There we go. He's just got some issues. We have so much milk, Jesus. Okay, we don't need any more milk anytime soon. We do need eggs, though. Egg tuna pasta. Egg tuna. Pasta. Boom. Egg tuna pasta with some sugar, bread, and water. Sugar. Bread. I feel like I'm making a bomb. And water. Boom. Uh, let's see. Need other flour and other oil. Flour. Oil. Then we need peanut butter. Peanut butter and apple juice. Peanut. Apple. Boom. Yeah, we're definitely working our way through our funds right now. Then we need other egg and potato. Other egg and potato. Boom. And I'm also, since we have the money for it, we need more sauces. So we'll get like two of that, two of that, and two of that. And that should be good for now. Because I noticed that the sauces, we only filled up half the shelves on both of them. That should be fine for now, though. Obviously, there's more stuff over here we need to restock, but not much we can do about that for now. We have plenty of veal steel, plenty of steak. Chicken. How do I forget the chicken? We always need more chicken. Just do two for now, though. Get that sorted in the morning. Open up. Boom. We'll help the movers move some stuff in the meantime. Boom. Yeah, now that we've completed Labyrinth, we're kind of definitely in the gameplay loop now, I feel. It's all about expansion from here. Sugar. Boom. I'm happy with our Labyrinth, though. I think we've done a good job on our Labyrinth. I couldn't ask for a better Labyrinth. Especially for the size. Like, in terms of size, we've extremely utilized the space. Like, the amount of money we've probably saved on not having to expand. I'd say it's probably evened itself out. Like, we have utilized literally every inch of this store. There is no spot where you can even place anything down. Every spot is as close to each other as possible. Nothing free. It is the most cramped store in the area. But it's the store that has the most heart too. And there's a Minotaur. You can't say that about Tesco's yet. Go more peanut butter. Boom. And more oil. Boom. I think I may have ordered too much of the oil, but that's fine. Boom. Do, do, boom. And boom. Okay, so that should be good for now. We'll just make sure the chicken's on order. Yep. One more checkout. We should be able to order the chicken. But I think we've definitely done a good job with this place. We had a goal and we achieved that goal. It may be only a small labyrinth though. But it's still a goal that we've achieved either way. Maybe someday in the future we'll get a better labyrinth. But I'm pretty proud of how this labyrinth came along. A lot of trial and error with it, for sure. A few little bits of rearranging we needed to do, too. I'm still disappointed we couldn't get a minute or two. Maybe someday in the future. Well, I'm assuming once they get, like, the shoplifting update in, there's going to be some way to, like, prevent people from shoplifting, right? Like, if there's a security guard... Ooh... Okay, I really hope they had a security guard for the shoplifting update. Because think of it this way. What if with the shoplifting update and there's a security guard that we can hire, he's the Minotaur, we rearrange everything so he's at the center. So if you rob something, you he has to like go from the center all the way out like a proper Minotaur. 
that would actually be perfect. Yeah, if they add that with the shoplifting update, I'm 100% redoing the, the labyrinth. 100%. That would be amazing. Honestly, not a bad labyrinth for sure. Small labyrinth, but a good labyrinth. The fact that it takes them 30 whole seconds to get from the checkout all the way to the front door. Like, you know, checkout's right here. Front door's right there. It takes them 30 seconds to get from here to there. I'd say that's a pretty good achievement. I got to think about it this way as well. The way that the NPCs are coded, they don't get things in order of where they're placed. Like, the way that they get things, like, say they want some candy. They get the candy here. Then, oh yeah, they want the beer. They've got to go all the way around here. All the way around here. All the way around here. Grab beer. But then they might also want chocolate. So they're going to have to double all the way back. All the way back over here. To get the chocolate. And then that'll just repeat over and over. They don't get things in, like, convenient ways. They do double back. Like, they won't get, like, the sugar because it's right next to them. They'll go get the beer and then get the sugar. So the NPCs could legitimately spend, like, so long in here. And I probably... Hmm. I kind of want to test it. Hold on. I'm going to get a timer. Let me get a timer on my phone real quick. Let me test this. Uh, let's see. Doo -doo -doo. Where is it? Clock. I want to test this. That'll be stopwatch. Okay, I'm going to stop the stopwatch. As soon as the customer goes in, I'm going to follow them until they leave. And go. Let's see how long it takes for this lady to finish her shopping day in here. I'm hoping it takes a while. Let's see. I mean, supermarkets do this too, right? They, they, they stalk people in the stores. This is a customer survey sort of thing, you know? There you go, she goes to the water. Let me turn the light on too. Boom. Actually, do they go for the more convenient things? Wait, is she only buying that stuff or is she buying more? Let's see. Is she just idly waiting? That's fine. Yeah, it's like, yeah, exactly. It's a user experience survey. That's what this is. We're really testing to see if our labyrinth is efficient. Did we waste your time today, miss? If yes, that's good. Please give us a star rating of your experience in the labyrinth. Okay, she's bought two whole items so far. Is she only buying two items? Oh, she's only buying two items. Okay. Maybe not the best test, but that's fine. God, our customers have so much time wasted in here. Now, let's see. She's got to work her way through this. Now, which line is she in? She's in the one for this one, right? Let's see. Give her some time. There, she ordered water and beer, right? Did she buy more? Wait, what is she? Is she in queue for this check? No, she's she's not in queue. For, she's in queue for this checkout. Sorry, I got confused in terms of the orientation of everything. She's in line for this one, not that one. Easy confusion to make. I mean, that's definitely going to add to the time for sure. The wait. Oh my god, there's so many customers in here. Let's see. We're currently at two minutes, by the way. And she only came in for water and beer. Yep, she only got four bottles of water and two beer. Let's see. And there we go. But now she's got to walk all the way out too. Her experience in the store isn't done just yet. She must make her way all the way out of the labyrinth too. Goes all the way around. Back this way, back this way. Around this way. 
Oh yeah, responsible drinker if she's buying the beer and the water. More water than beer. Okay, get ready on the stopwatch. And... And... Time. So that was 3 minutes and 12 seconds from entering the store and leaving for only buying two items. So three whole minutes just for two items. It's probably a lot worse if you're buying multiple. Not bad though. Good time, I'd say. I mean, that's like the average time for going to a supermarket, right? I will say probably a minute of that was spent in line at the checkout. So I don't know if that should be counted or not. Because the checkouts are definitely a little bit full right now. As they are obviously saying in the store. But hey, I consider that a successful labyrinth, if you ask me. Like, if you think about it, if this was organized efficiently, she could have just walked in, grabbed beer, grabbed water, come to check out, and then leave within, like, maybe, you know, maybe, like, at most 30 seconds. At most a minute, I'd say. If it's set up more efficiently. But efficiency isn't the name of the game here. The name of the game is wasting the customer's time. In this store, the customer is never right. Only I'm right. They're wrong. If they don't like the labyrinth, then they can leave in 30 seconds that it takes them to get from here all the way to the exit. It's not my fault that they don't like my labyrinth. I would execute them on the spot if I could if they insulted my labyrinth. Perfect, perfect. I'm just happy that it works, too, to be honest. You know, we'll do one more test. We'll do the first customer of the day, because he won't have to wait in line at all for the checkout. We'll see how long it takes for the first customer of the day to make it from the entrance to the exit. That'll be a good test for this. Because then, you know, the queue won't really be too much of a factor. We'll get the raw data. The raw there we go. Just got to wait for all these customers to be done for the day. I highly doubt this game was ever designed to be a labyrinth game, but it can be a labyrinth game. Any game can be a labyrinth game with enough effort put into it. Every game should have a minute all. And one day I'll be able to get one in this too. That'll really make them speed up their time inside the labyrinth. I mean, the restocking dudes are kind of like Minotaurs. They don't have a giant battle axe, though, unfortunately. Or maybe the cashiers? The cashiers more like Minotaurs? I feel like for a Minotaur, them to be classified as a Minotaur, they need to chase the customers. Which is why I'm saying the security guard would be good for that. Alright, let's see. Almost at the end of the day. Ending with decent profit, too. I might even just skip the restocking part tomorrow. I just want to go and see how long it takes them to get from the start to the end with no lines in the checkout. First customer of the day. So let me reset. So 3 minutes, 12 seconds. That's how long it took that one person. Let's see. Just got to wait for them to be done. Last few customers of the day. We actually made some really good profits today, though. I think it's worth buying that extra... Um... What's it called? Also, is the chicken flying off the shelves anymore? I feel like chicken isn't selling too much anymore. Eh, kind of. Not as much as it used to. Okay, they're all good. They're all done. Let's see how we'll do profit-wise. Honestly, all things considered, that isn't too bad. Candy's gone up in price. That's fine. Boom. Change it to 4.5. Let's see, are we desperately low on stock? I just want to start this test. Uh, screw it, I want to start this test. I want to see this test. And boom. Okay, I've got my timer ready to see the first customer of the day. I want to see how long it takes them to do their first shop with no lines whatsoever. So it is purely the data from the labyrinth itself. No other factors involved. This is science right here. Labyrinth science. 
Okay. I think it's this lady. She's coming over with a powerful strut. And... Time. All right. Let's see how long it takes. I'm hoping she has a decent sized shop. Because we didn't get too much good data last time since she only bought two things. Okay, she's got some pasta. I'm interested if she doubles back at any point too. Let's see. Is she only buying the pasta? No way she's only buying the pasta. Is she only buying pasta? Okay, no, she's buying beer. Buying some beer and oh, perfect. See, this is what the labyrinth is all about. It's all about the double back. Doubling back to buy more things. What's she gonna buy? She's buying some eggs too. No, yes, yeah, some eggs. Then she goes back this way. Buy some salmon. Let's see, is that everything or is she buying more beer? Let's see. Nope, she's buying some fries. And <laughs> she has to double back again. Okay, this is actually a really good test subject. She walks all the way back round. Let's see, what's she going for now? She decided that she needs some apple juice. Okay. Then she gets some tuna. Oh yeah, this is a good experiment. Good test subject. Okay, she done with everything? Let's see. Does she now go to the checkout? Or does she need some ice cream too? Let's see. Nope, she's ready to purchase. We're at two minutes so far. Well, one minute and 50 seconds. Again, there's no lines, so this is just pure, pure data. No other factors included. Perfect. Okay, now we follow her to the end. Let's see. Still doing good time-wise. All the way through. The more stuff than intended that stores like this. I mean, that's the whole reason stuff like this is organized this way. No one ever goes into a store and only buys the stuff they went in the store for. The way it's designed is you're supposed to be able to see some more things that you want to buy. And... Time. So that is 2 minutes and 34 seconds from entrance to exit. Considering and the, there was no lines whatsoever, so she instantly got to the checkout. I'd say that's pretty good. Considering that if this was otherwise, she'd maybe spend like at most a minute in the store. Like, you know, she'd come in, go one aisle, buy the stuff. Maybe the other aisle's over here, buy that. Then go back over here, buy that. Go to the checkout, in, out, probably like 30 seconds maximum. But that was like 2 minutes and 34 seconds. So on average, I think the customer spends like, as far as I can tell, maybe 3 minutes in the store on average. I'd love to see how much on average they'd be in, an, in a regular store. Just like for comparison reasons. But I'm going to say the average is like 2 minutes and 40 seconds to 3 minutes. For a customer experience inside this little store here. Especially for a store this size too. Like we're not a large store. We're like the size of a Londis if that. Or you know just a corner store. I'd say that's pretty good time, though. Lots of time wasted, which is perfect. This whole experiment is all about wasting the customer's time. We're finally getting revenge on the customers. That's what this store's all about. There is no customer service here. Only customer hostility. It's a hostile work environment, but not for me. <laughs> it's for them. Perfect. Yeah, chicken definitely doesn't seem to be selling much anymore, but that's fine. You okay there, dude? Why is it always this milk? There we go. Perfect. Our store is working efficiently as heck. Well, not really. Whatever the opposite of efficiency is, that's how this store's running right now. Very unefficiently. But cool unefficiently. I'd love to see what we could do with, like, a maximum size store. 
Like, if you look at the upgrades and how we can expand this place, like, we can get this place so much larger. Like, we're only on section 4 right now. It goes up to section 23. The end point of this game is, like, what's that? That's five times the size of this. Yeah, that, that makes sense, yeah. This is five times the size is what the end game store would look like. Imagine what we could do with that. I think that would just take us too much time, though, unfortunately. <laughs> like, the amount of money and the amount of time that it would take to make an efficient labyrinth with that, it would take, like, it would probably take me the rest of the year. <laughs> it would take me so goddamn long, but it would be cool. Good labyrinth, though. I'm happy with this labyrinth. It's a small, tiny... It's a proof of concept. That's what this is. What this labyrinth is, this is a proof of concept of what you can do with this game if you were, you know, go on a little bit more. You can really push it to its limits. God, imagine the amount of fridges we would need for, like, a full-size labyrinth. We would need so many. Now, this is only, what, one, two, three circles. We could probably easily get to, like, six or seven circles in terms of size if we really, like, compact it into size. In fact, what we could probably do is, like, double it up. So, you know, have one fridge this size, one fridge that side, and that's how we circle around. And then, you know, you do the freezes the same way, one this side, one that side, the shelves the same way, one that side, one that side. That's probably how I'd organize it. We, there probably isn't enough stock in the game it, to do that, though. Like, we could probably dedicate an entire double rack to every item at the end game. Oh, God. Ima oh. Imagine how much time we'd need to spend in the stock room every morning for that. I don't know how you can make this more efficient, though. I do wish there was a way to make the restocking, like, in here more efficient. It would be good. I would enjoy it at the very least. Or at least a better way to, like, keep track of what's in stock in here and what's out of stock rather than, like, running around. There's got to be a better way for that. Got to be more automation. I don't think there is. The automation comes from the employees, but this is all the employees you can get. As far as I'm aware, there's no other ways to make it more efficient. I'm pretty sure at the very least. Maybe somewhere down the line... I don't know. Maybe some do like the storage room? Management, storage. Because definitely increase the size of the storage room. I imagine the way... The, the, the painful thing as well is the limit in orders too. I kind of wish that that wasn't the case. Because there's you can only order 10 items at a time. That's painful. Because otherwise I just make a habit of like order one of every item every morning. But the way I've got to do it, I've got to do like one, 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 order, one, 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 order, one, 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 order. And that just gets a little bit tedious, you know? That's why people get mods. Honestly, I see the appeal of that to make things a bit more efficient. I always like to do my first playthrough of games raw, though, to get like the raw experience. And then, you know, mod maybe some other time. That's just like how I personally like to experience the games. Couldn't find Kavito's chips. That's fine. But no, I'm happy with our labyrinth. I think it's turned out pretty well. It's a nice labyrinth. Maybe one day I can finally get a Minotaur. Maybe I'll need to look to see if there's any Minotaur mods I can get. I wouldn't be surprised if someone's already made a shoplifting mod for it. You know, before they add it as an actual update. Definitely wouldn't be surprised by that. It's a nice labyrinth, though. I like this labyrinth. Can find beer, that's all good. Gotta wait for these last customers. Yeah, definitely another cashier would be very useful too. Boom. The shop and the owners on top of the freezer. It's a good vantage point. That's what it is. A very good vantage point. Good run? I think it's good. We like I said, we achieved our goal. Of making a working labyrinth. Which, honestly, I didn't think was going to be possible. Considering, like, size and everything. But I think we made a really good labyrinth here. Simple labyrinth. But as I said, it's a proof of concept. 
There's also like many different ways you could do this. Like, and you could also make like a maze as well. But the thing is, a maze wouldn't work with NPCs because they've got their own tracking. That's what went more for a labyrinth more so than a maze. Because, you know, NPCs aren't going to get lost. They know where to go. You can't like have a dead end because NPCs know it's a dead end. They cheat. But you can't cheat a labyrinth. They still got to walk through the labyrinth. I still win at the end of the day. And that's the main thing. Alrighty. There we go. All good. Our labyrinth is functional and it's pretty profitable. But I think I'm probably going to leave the labyrinth as it is for now. I definitely would love to come back to vis revisit it at some point though. I think maybe if they in the future updates I'll come back to this. Like we've got a good base to work with here for the future. It's just I feel like now the gameplay cycle is going to get a little bit repetitive. So I think I'd rather leave it until they add some maybe some more mechanics that we can work with. Maybe I'll venture into the mods too. But I think at least for now, that is probably going to be it for me. At, at least with this game and you know, for the stream today. My, my throat's a little bit rough because of the hay fever today. So I thought I might just call it a little bit early. But I'm happy with the progress that we made with Supermarket Simulator. I just had a lot of fun with it. I think having that like set goal for us definitely made it a lot more of an engaging process for me. That's why I've spent like, you know, what's that like, how many streams? Like at least five or six streams in a row just playing it. But I need to do some more variety. I, 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 I need to get out of the habit of just doing one game and nothing but one game. It's a habit I really need to get out of. So next stream on Friday, we're going to be playing something a bit different. Either I want to try a new game. Like, there's a few games that are on my list right now. Like this one that's called Into the Chamberland. I think I really want to give that one a shot. That one's new as of last month, I look. It looked like a very nice, cozy game. So I think we're going to give that a go on Friday. But thank y'all for joining me tonight. Like, an apology is a little bit shorter. Just when it comes to my throat, I don't like to overdo it just because, you know, this is my main instrument. So I'd rather not, you know, risk damaging it in any sort of way. But I'm just happy that we were able to make our successful labyrinth. And maybe someday in the future, we'll be able to get ourselves a minotaur. But in my heart, there will always be a Minotaur. We made many sacrifices to him. He is my son, and he will always hold a close place in my heart. I hope to maybe introduce him into another game at some point. I honestly want to make another Labyrinth in another game. H House Flipper. House Flipper is one that I really want to do too. That's definitely on the list. And we are 100% going to make a Labyrinth in House Flipper too. Wasting NPC time, wasting customer time, that is my priority. But yeah. I hope y'all have a lovely rest of your Wednesday. As I said, I'll be back on Friday and we'll do some more chill time then. Till then, hope y'all have a lovely rest of your night. And remember, keep it chill. Peace.